Hey, hey everybody, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a fabulous day wherever you are in the world. I hope you are well and I hope you are safe. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. Cool class we are doing. We're going to be making pizza, but we're going to be making a gluten and dairy free base that has literally got I think it's only got five ingredients. And by the way, that's my oven beeping, telling me it is preheated, which is thank you oven. I know that you're ready to go. Um, so we're making a pizza base using five ingredients. Um, it's known as cloud bread. If no one, if you've never heard of cloud bread, it is like um, a, a meringue type base, um, but it usually has quite a lot of dairy in it. So we are doing a dairy and gluten free free, sorry, uh, pizza base, a uh, cloud base, and then we're just going to put some toppings on it. It's actually really easy to do, but it's fabulous. And by the way, little sneaky, sneaky little pick for you. This recipe actually made it into my new cookbook. So we're hoping we'll be able to release the cookbook, the new cookbook, Moorish, in around about, sort of we're thinking maybe six weeks, which will be around about uh, end of May, beginning of June, somewhere around that time, we're hoping to get that book out for pre-launch for you guys, which is exciting, and yes, this recipe made it into the cookbook, but you get a little sneak peek, you get it early, of course you do, because it's such a fabulous recipe, really good for kids to get involved in the kitchen as well, or well, kids of all ages, because it's one of the ones that I gave it to Mahei, and he was sort of like, that's crazy, that tastes amazing, and that's all we want in life, right? We want food that is really, really good for us, but it tastes amazing because then you don't feel like you're on a diet. You're just eating really delicious food. And I reckon this recipe is one of those. So let's get into the recipe. It, as I said, there's only five ingredients involved in our base. Um, and it's pretty simple to do. I do have my machine here, my uh, little cake mixer. I will be using that. But of course, you could do this by hand if you don't have a cake mixer or just an electric whisk. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to separate our egg yolks. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting the whites into my mixing bowl here and then I'm going to be putting the yolks into my little food processor as well. So we're taking four um, large eggs and remember so we're going to go whites in here. Of course we don't, when you're making, it's because we're kind of making a meringue. I don't have a bin. <laughs> I've lost my bins. Whatever to what, never mind. It's okay. It's alright. I'll just throw it underneath me. Um, when it comes to making meringue, as you know, and this cloud base does have a bit of a meringue in it, you don't want to get any of the yolk into the white, otherwise you won't get a really stiff meringue. So um, when you are separating your egg yolks from your egg whites, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. My favorite way that I've done pretty much all my chef's career is to obviously break the egg in half and then just transfer the yolk from one shell to the other and as you're doing that as you can see what happens is the white kind of drips off and goes into the bowl which is perfect and then you don't have to worry too much about getting any yolk in your white if you do get yolk in your white you can use the eggshell the empty eggshell to just scoop it out so there it's not a complete fail it does you can actually get away with it so we're doing four eggs remember four eggs and we're just going to transfer did you see the first time i did it is i actually put it onto my hand i keep on going for the bin and the bin's not there habit is really hard to break isn't it um the first time i did it because i was a bit worried that my yolk was going to go into my whites is i actually used my hands to transfer it just make sure your hands are obviously really clean you just drop the egg onto your hand and just very gently or very slightly separate your fingers and then the white will drop through but as I was saying make sure that your hands are really really clean if you are doing that so once we've got our yolks and our whites separated this is going to go over to our machine but before I do that I'm going to be making the rest of the mixture that's going to be used to make our pizza base and believe it or not it's avocado. So, not, as I said, normally cloud bread, if anyone's ever made cloud bread before, it's usually made with, um, with cheese or cream cheese or something along those lines. 
we are doing a dairy free version and we're using a nice ripe avocado so this avocado they've got here you see it's kind of a a, a, um, a green one as opposed to the darker brown one this is known as a shepherd avocado um, it is right now in season in Australia what are we April it is in season in Australia it's only got a very short season this particular um, this particular type of avocado and then it goes back to the normal darker has avocados nutritionally they are the same but um, some people prefer the flavor of the shepherd to the normal has like me I'm not too bothered I just want nice ripe delicious avocado and um, into the egg yolks we're really putting our avocado and you want to put in here I'm using about half of a you know normal size avocado but ideally throw it onto your scales because then you get to measure it and you get it you know get the recipe right and we're gonna be putting in 75 grams of our lovely ripe avocado and 75 grams, that's around about two and a half ounces of avocado goes in there. So getting it all out, wonderful. Oh, <laughs> I keep going back to the rubbish. Oh, it's not thin. Oh gosh. Okay, never mind. It'll just start throwing it on the floor soon. Okay, into our mix, we are also going to be adding in some psyllium husk. Now, psyllium husk is going to help to bind our cloud bread, our cloud pizza base, but it's also going to add some dietary fiber, which is really, really important. Got to have our dietary fiber in our food. So um, there's fiber in the avocado too, by the way. So this is, a, this is a great, great healthy recipe. So one teaspoon of our psyllium husk goes into our mixture. And then the very last ingredient, the only other thing that's going to go in here is I'm just going to add a pinch of mineral salt. Is going to go in there as well so once you've done that it's just a matter of giving it a bit of a blend if your avocado is super duper duper ripe you could probably avoid putting it in your food processor because um, you could probably do it with a whisk or do it you know with a fork but my avocado is like perfect eating avocado it's just right but a little bit firm so I'm going to blend this until it's really well mixed depending on the ripeness of your avocado will determine how long this actually takes. You want it really, really well blended because it's going to have to go through the egg whites once they are meringued up. So we're going to set that off to the side for now. I'm going to grab up my, my whisk. And what you want to do with your egg whites is get it to a really nice stiff peak. But the first step is to get it nice and frothy. You guys can see that quite well there, can't you? Wonderful. All right. First step. We're going to get it nice and frothy. Sorry about the noise. Nice and frothy. Like I said, you can do this by hand with a whisk. But you're going to need really big muscles because we want to almost make like a, a meringue or a pavlova. So once it's at this frothy stage, which is what you can see here, you know, you've given it a bit of a, a good whisk. I'm going to be adding into it, and this is going to help to strengthen the, um, the cloud bread so it doesn't completely deflate once it's cooked. It'll actually still hold, its, hold itself a little bit. Um, you're going to be adding in half a, once you've got to the frothy stage, half a teaspoon, and this is cream of tartar. is going to go in there, and that's what's going to help to give it that stability. And now... We're going to whisk this until we get really stiff peaks. This could take between, you know, probably a minute for me because I'm using the machine. Maybe it could take up to five minutes if you're doing it by hand. But don't give up. This is the important part because this is what's going to help to give our cloud bread that cloud-like texture, you know, that really light and fluffiness that you want. This is really important. All right. your whites are done they're ready to go when you're able to lift the whisk out and it leaves trails behind it leaves a mark because you can must be quite stiff so I'm going to keep it going for maybe another 20 seconds 
thing. See how we good? See how we good? That's looking good. That's looking really good. This machine is like one of my favorite, favorite purchases in the last year. It's just, it saves so much energy, you know? You don't have to do it yourself. You can do it ah, with the machine. Perfect. Now you see it's clinging to the whisk, which is great, but we've also got um, it coming when the whisk came out, it left whisk mask. So that's what you're after. Nice and fluffy is really important. Okie dokie. So this is going to come off the mixer. And then taking up, remember our little, our little avocado and yolk mixture that we made not long ago? Taking that up now. I don't want to waste any, so I'm going to use my spatula to make sure that we've got it all off. Don't want to waste any of that gorgeous, gorgeous avocado. And then taking up your spatula, what you want to do is, and it's really important, this at this stage, I would not suggest anything but the spatula because you, we're going to be folding this through. And if we're too rough, we're going to knock all the air out of it. So very gently kind of dot your avocado mix just kind of around the white you know don't just all dump it on because once again the egg whites will deflate which we don't want to happen so you know make sure that we are spacing it out and being gentle being nice and gentle all right and then using that same spatula you're just going to start to very very gently fold the avocado mix through the whites now, by the way, I have to tell you that if you want to, you don't have to make pizza with this. You can just make bread. You don't actually have to, but it does work phenomenally well as a pizza base. So um, if you just wanted to make bread, 100%, you have now made dairy-free cloud bread. Well, you haven't baked it yet, but you've made it. You've made it this far, which is really, really good. So um, once we're at that stage, Happy with that, you know, so I was nice and gentle. I wasn't too rough, really, really important. Let us take up our baking tray. By the way, the oven is preset. You heard it beeping at me not when we first started. It's preset at 150 degrees Celsius, which is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's kind of a low to moderate oven. You don't want this too hot. We don't want it to brown too much. We want it to really gently bake through. So what you may have noticed that I have on my little board, my little tray here, is I have one of those reusable oven tray silicone mat things. But my one has got some circles on it. Because it's, I'm making pizza and I've decided I want a round one, <laughs> I'm going to use that circle as a guide. If you don't have one of these, don't worry, you don't need it. It just definitely helps to create a circle. But rustic is good too. Now I don't have to spray it because it's a silicone mat, so it does the, the pizza or the cloud base doesn't stick to it, which is really, really good. And as I was saying, I've got my lovely circle there, so I am applying this mixture in a circle. I know, pretty clever. You could also, you know, draw a circle onto your baking paper, because you definitely have to have something laid down on your baking sheet to make sure that it doesn't stick, because that would be a nightmare. You don't want that to happen. So don't flatten it too much, because remember, because this is egg white, you will get deflation. You will get deflation once it comes out of the oven. So don't flatten it too much, but as you can see, you can get a really decent size, you know, six slice, well, four, depending on <laughs> how big you want your slices, of um, cloud pizza here. Now, if you wanted to make it into bread, I would suggest that you just do like little rounds. You could get four to six rounds of the cloud bread on here as well. So really, really easy. All right, so we're doing that. It's looking really good. Kind of smooth it off a bit. Don't waste any of the mixture. That's the good stuff, right? That is the good stuff. Okay. So remember our oven? Preset on 150 or 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius. This now goes in the oven for 16 to 18 minutes. Um, it, it will brown up a little bit when it's cooking, but 16 to 18 minutes doesn't take long. So let's pop this over here. And here is one I prepared earlier. As you can see, it does deflate a little bit, 
but what you are left with is a really, really good base. Look at that, like a pizza base. It's fabulous. Now, I do suggest that when it comes out of the oven, I'll allow it to cool down for about, you know, five to ten minutes. And while it's, after it's cooled down, take a bit of a spatula like this and just run it under the base. Because when you go to slice it, to serve it, you, uh, it's a good idea to just pick it up off the base. So it's, it's free. Otherwise, it can be a little bit difficult to get your slices off. We have a question. Yes, my Where did you get your square mat? Where did I get my square mat from? So that square mat, you can buy them from like chef stores. There's like King of Knives, I believe, sell them. But I got my one. It was a baking sale at Aldi. <laughs> you know when they have all that? Sorry, anyone who does not who doesn't have Aldi, but Aldi is fabulous. It cost me like seven dollars or something like that. But what you're looking for is a silicon baking sheet or baking mat. Most kitchen stores sell them. Of course, probably the best place I would suggest go look online. Go look online. Have it delivered to your house. Let your fingers do the walking. Silicon baking mat or baking sheet is what you are looking for. The key word there is silicon because that's what's the non-stick um, ability. And get one that has markings. Mine has um, centimeters and inches down the side and of course it has that wonderful circle for getting the perfect shaped pizza which is fabulous. All right, so now that your pizza is at this, this stage, your pizza base, it's really just up to you to decide what toppings you're going to want to use. And the toppings, of course, are as the, the variety, you, whatever, you go for it. You decide what you want as a topping, depending on what you eat, what you like, what you have in the fridge. This is the perfect recipe to clean out the fridge. You've got a base now, and by the way, make this base in advance, and then pop it into the fridge, and then when you're ready to top it, literally, you treat it like that. This will last for a couple days in your fridge like this. Obviously cover it with a bit of cling film, it can last in your fridge. All you've got to do is put the toppings on when you're ready to eat. So right now, um, you know, if I wasn't baking the other one, what you would do is I would actually have my oven set on grill or broiler for our American friends, grill or broiler, because all you're going to be doing after this, you're not, you don't have to cook anymore, you just have to melt and heat the toppings. So I'm going to be using as a base, I have in here, my world famous in uh, Australia <laughs> roasted tomato sauce is going to be my base. So, as I was saying, you could you could do whatever you want when it comes to the toppings. I'm using my roasted tomato sauce because of all the wonderful spices and flavors that it's got in there. But if you don't have my roasted tomato sauce, I would suggest that you grab yourself up a really good can of Italian whole peeled tomatoes. You blend those tomatoes, you pop them into a pot with some little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of our zero as sugar. This stuff, maybe, maybe for a can, you're probably only looking at about half a tablespoon of zero as sugar. And you bring it to the boil and you let it simmer away for about 10 to 15 minutes and then you're going to have your own like 10 to 15 minutes made tomato sauce, tomato base. I've looked in the supermarket at all the tomato, not all of them, but at a lot of different tomato sauce bases that are pre-made in jars. They all have sugar. They all have preservatives. So you can make your own in 15 minutes just with a can. You know, this can costs about a dollar. It's pretty, it's pretty reasonable. You could add herbs to it. You know, you could add spices to it. You could add a bit of, bit of that zero as sugar because it's going to help just to get through the acid of the tomatoes. But me, I always have roasted tomato sauce in my fridge. So it is easy to then just use this as a base. And for this size pizza, you're probably looking at sort of half to three quarters of a cup of the roasted tomato sauce goes on here. So a good amount. And we have just added, obviously, so much flavor to the base of that pizza it's almost it's almost insane because you guys if you've had my roasted tomato sauce before which book is it in give me a second i believe it's in the green book it's in more from bridges healthy kitchen if you want a copy of that recipe this stuff is phenomenal there is so much flavor here you mix this with zucchini noodles and oh my gosh that's all you need to do don't even cook the zucchini noodles heat the sauce 
add the zucchini noodles and you're good to go it is amazing so um, that is a definite recommendation if you haven't tried it for everyone who has tried it you know, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> to tell you guys you guys already know all right so I'm going to show you some ideas on toppings ideas only right it's up to you and like I said this is this is literally clean out the fridge moment oh what am I gonna where am I gonna put it I better move that out of the way so we can actually just go through a few of those toppings just very quickly ideas inspiration so to speak so you could go completely traditional right roasted tomato sauce um, you could even add a few um, slices of fresh tomato because that's going to give texture which is really really nice you could add what I have in here because if you want to go completely dairy free I actually have dairy free um, mozzarella here little baby mozzarellas um, and a little bit of dairy free grated mozzarella you can totally do that this particular dairy free cheese I bought at the supermarket is uh, made with coconut milk so it's pretty it's pretty interesting but it does melt like cheese which is pretty fabulous so you could go completely dairy free if you need to or if you want to and use a, a um, dairy free cheese but of course you could go traditional and you could do something like a good block of parmesan cheese and grate that over the top totally up to you so you could do traditional I've got basil here so you could basically make a margarita pizza tomato and basil with a bit of cheese you're done right nice vegetarian pizza but then you can also think outside the square a bit if you wanted to add on toppings that were a little bit less traditional for example chop up some tofu why not I reckon it'll be amazing I haven't had it yet but I reckon it'll be good um, I have some leftover like any type of leftover protein that you might have in your fridge this is just some leftover sticky salmon that we, we had for dinner or well, for lunch yesterday. So that's a little piece of leftover sticky salmon. You could do a salmon type pizza. You could do in here, I actually have some nitrate free ham. You could do that on there as well. Notice how I didn't say pineapple, <laughs> but you could. I'm not saying you should. I know there's people out there that love their Hawaiian pizzas so I have a nitrate free ham which is amazing this is so so good oh, I could put that on there you could think about topping it with some spinach or some rocket or arugula I mean the choice is yours and of course oh this is a bit more traditional why not some olives as well anchovies you decide what you're gonna do with your pizza once you put on the base but I have to say the tomato base or what you've got to start with a tomato base you, you can't not have tomato base on your pizza that's where you start so what I thought I would do is I am gonna go sem, semi traditional I'm gonna start with a bit of a grating of my lovely parmesan cheese and remember really really good to know and to remember that when it comes to hard cheeses like parmesan cheese or really aged cheeses like a really aged cheddar or a really amazing aged gouda cheese as well all those cheeses you know pecorino anything that's really hard and really aged is really good for our gut bacteria so it's okay for you to have some of this cheese on your pizza it's absolutely okay because what you are doing is you are feeding your healthy gut bacteria and you're creating that wonderful diversity in your gut which is just so incredibly important for all of us right the more gut bacteria diverse gut bacteria the better our health is and guess what you can feed your healthy bacteria with a hard cheese if you were looking at any cheese I would always suggest you go for a hard cheese first um, before any other type of cheese because remember it's that fermentation so what happens when, when a hard cheese is produced is the lactose content is naturally lowered because of that, that aging process that it goes through, which is amazing. So for anyone who does have issues with lactose intolerances, go for an aged cheese. And the longer the age, the better. So I believe I've got a Gouda in my fridge right now, you know, the lovely cheese from, um, from the Netherlands. Uh, that is 24 months, so it's two years old. It's so wonderful. Um, you know, your average Parmesan cheese is aged 12, 18, 24 months. So go for something that's really well aged. Lactose quantity, uh, 
quality has been reduced significantly, but also your gut bacteria are going to go, you lovely person, and they're going to multiply and help to create a wonderful environment in there. So cheese first on the tomato. I'm also going to go for, as I was saying, I'm going to go fairly traditional here. I'm going to use some ripe tomato. I'm using a vine ripened tomato. And you can tell, look how red that is. It's, it's, it's redder than my lipstick. I would love a lip in the juice coming out of it. I love a lipstick that color actually, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna use some tomato and I'm using tomato because I love the texture. You could use lovely little cherry tomatoes on here if you wanted to, completely up to you. But I quite like these vine tomatoes or heirloom tomatoes because you get the most wonderful flavor. I'm spacing it out so we can get you can get six slices out of this. Four to six depends on who you're. I don't know that. Depends on who you're slicing it for. So that is good. But I, what I really want to do, because I've got this wonderful nitrate-free ham here, is I'm just going to strip it away and use it as a topping as well. You make yours vegetarian. You do not have to do. You know, this is where you go crazy or just be a little bit experimental or be a bit safe and go with the flavors you know you like but you know clean out the fridge and this is in our fridge so i am literally cleaning out the fridge okay so that goes on don't overload it too much you kind of want to space things out you don't have to have you know uh, less is more uh, when it comes to pizza toppings even though i know there is a tendency for people to want to just like put everything on at the same time remember less is more and then i'm just going to add you know what i am going to add less is more and she starts adding more stuff <laughs> I am going to add that mozzarella because I'm like I said it's semi-traditional but why not oh let's add a bit of that as well just just a little bit of that uh, grated one goes on there as well let's add some spinach just for a bit of color a little bit of greenness goes a long way bit more of that grated mozzarella is going on there so we get a you know once it goes into the oven we're going to get a lovely little uh, little melt, which is kind of what makes pizza pizza. You want to see the melt? I've got a bit of basil. I've got a bit of basil. Cut. You've got to have basil. I mean, you don't have to, but it's nice when you do, right? It's nice when you do have a bit of basil. I'm just going to chop it roughly so I can get a bit of a, a, bit of a blend going on there. I used to own a, uh, a pub here in Sydney and it had a pizza section and um, we used to get quite experimental with our pizza toppings but in saying that it was usually the classics that always went before any other topping bit of pepper all right this now goes into the oven remember the oven is set at grill um, so it's got to you know, melt the cheese on top everything's kind of cooked on here you don't want to cook the tomatoes the raw ones so everything else is, is kind of cooked you kind of just want to melt the cheese so let's go over to the oven I'm going to pop it in and I'm going to cross my fingers that I don't burn it because that'll be really embarrassing especially because I shared with you guys that I um, I used to own a, <laughs> a public and a pizzeria in it but um, you want it in the oven like I said all we're doing now is we are heating up those toppings that's why that base is can be held in your fridge for a couple of days because you will finish the pizza off obviously when you go to melt whatever's on top you know if you want to go completely cheese free please do as well you know all you're doing then is just heating those toppings whatever toppings you decide to put in there depending on the strength of your grill or your broiler broiler is another name for grill we call them grills in, in here in Australia and New Zealand and I think in the UK top heat is what you want in your oven because we're just doing that browning sensation now we've got a question yes great can timing it, can it be frozen can the pizza base be frozen? Yes, it can. Or if you're making cloud bread, just, you know, your small little bits of bread, yes, you can freeze it. What you need to do is make sure that you put baking, if you're doing a couple of, you know, pizzas, bases at a time, put some baking paper between the bases so that it's really easy for you to access when you want to, um, when you want to reheat your pizza. Now, if you do freeze it, I, I recommend that you defrost it overnight, ideally um, in the bottom of the fridge or on the bench if you're in a cold kitchen. That's the ideal way to do it. Um, you know, but you can, you can 
heated up from frozen in the oven it just might need a little bit more talking about ovens hold that thought as I was saying I don't want to burn it nah it's looking good it's looking fabulous so um when it comes to things along these lines obviously when it comes to pizza and 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 bread and stuff like this you know this particular pizza is, it's so incredible what do we use eggs psyllium husks which are really really good for us um, we had avocado and there's a bit of salt and a bit of um, this stuff here cream of tartar so in the grander scheme of things there's no grain there's no gluten obviously there's no dairy so this is something that you can actually put you know you can have um, every now and then you know it's not something that you can only have as an absolute treat because the actual base of this pizza is really really good for us and just one thing I want to point out as she keeps an eye on her pizza is um, this cream of tartar this cream of tartar is actually a really good source of potassium now one of the reasons why and this is a really cool little secret for not secret little tip for anybody one of the reasons why I always suggest you use mineral salt whether that be Himalayan salt or another type of sea salt really good quality mineral salt is because number one there's obviously sodium in here and we need sodium um, to keep our our electrolytes balanced in our body so it's really important that we have sodium but the other thing that mineral salt has it has natural amounts of potassium and it's potassium that will if you suffer at all from um, water retention potassium is going to really really help you to naturally release any type of water retention that's why mineral salt is so important it's the potassium levels especially that help with anyone who suffers from um, holding on to fluid and if you do suffer from holding on to fluid I suggest you put a pinch of cream of tartar in your water bottle as well that's gonna help naturally too good little tip nice little segue over to the oven she goes and it's looking pretty good we have got some colour happening on top. Only needs a, like a couple of minutes, all depending on how hot your grill is. I have my grill on high because I'm crazy like that. I like to live life on the edge. <laughs> that's why I was like watching it, watching it, watching it. All right, so my tea towel's wet, so that's very hot. All right, so as you can see, this is what we have. We have something that kind of resembles pizza, right? And we've made it using avocado and egg whites and egg yolks, which is just crazy. All we need to do now, slice it up, finish it off. Right, I even have a pizza board, very fancy. And a pizza peel, this is called. You see, you remember when, um, when we were doing the actual bread, and I said to you, make sure to lift the pizza base off, off the paper before you put toppings on this is why just in case you like me want to serve it on a board so it looks even more pizzery then it helps that you have already lifted it off that paper otherwise it can be well seriously hard to get off Alrighty. so putting this here can you go see that's nice right let's grab ourselves a knife and I'll show you how easy it is to cut through so as I was saying you can get four to six slices depending on how big you want your slices oh gosh it's wonderful and it smells so good and it looks so authentic can you see that I wish I was closer to you guys but I want you to see how fabulous that looks. It is an incredible, easy, delicious, super healthy way to get all those vegetables, all these tomatoes, and of course all that avocado into your diet in such a, a fun looking way. So thank you so much for joining me today. It has been an absolute pleasure having you in the kitchen. I will be sharing this recipe in full on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen tomorrow. You can join us on the page Keep an eye out for it, request the recipe, and then Mahe, the clever sods, will send it straight out to you um, on Messenger. We'll be sharing that with you guys tomorrow morning. In the meantime, be well, be safe. I look forward to seeing you back here in the kitchen next week because it's Anzac week. So we'll be cooking some Anzac treats here in the kitchen. Take care, guys. Bye.